Hello there, I'm Scotty Yornot. Welcome back to the Safe by the Bell retrospective. And we are on the episode called The Gift. I didn't realize we were already on that one. That's a. I, I, I like this one. Yeah. So the premise of this is that while helping Zach with his ham radio, Screech is on the, the roof, he gets struck by lightning. And it gives him the magic power to see the future. He also temporarily has the ability to turn on elect electrical stuff, lamps and TV sets and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we start with the guys making a bet. Well, first of all, we start with more fourth wall breaking narration from Zach, who mentions that we that they're in a hat that the three things that teenagers have to worry about are measles, mumps. And midterms. Uh, and uh, that the, the worst midterm, like the most, not worst as in, it's, it's like it's badly done, but like worst as in, the one that everyone is afraid of is dealt with, is dealt out by a teacher called Mr. Terrible Test of Verde. Terrible Test of Verde, Mr. Test of Verde. And so they mentioned that. And then here comes Slater with a bet. And they set up, the Slater set this up that uh, they got a victim, they got two water balloons, and at a certain point, they got to throw it at whoever it is. So they, okay, they so he says, now! And out from the locker comes Screech. Zach hesitates, because he's the one to throw it at his friend. But Slater also stops and then throws it. And the only thing I can think of why he doesn't throw it right away is it, it, go, it goes back to... The way they take their direction. Like someone said, okay, this is what's going to happen. Screech is going to come out. You're both going to stop. Zach's going to say, Screech, while Screech is moving around. Then, Mario, you're going to throw yours. It all comes down to direction. Because in real life, Screech would get hit by Slater's water balloon before Zach even had a chance to react. But they both hesitate to just, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So he gets Zach's ham radio. Yeah. So. Uh, is, he, is he him? Ham radio? Is he? No, he gets Zach's sunglasses. And then he gives. Uh. Screech five bucks, but he does it like this where he takes his shirt and does it because I guess they didn't have any prop money, so they had to do he does it in his pocket and it goes like this. They don't have any prop money. I don't know. But that goes for another bet. And Slater once again gets to make up the bet this again and he goes, uh Uh I bet you let's make a bet who's gonna come down the the stairs first. I bet it's Kelly. And, and, uh, uh, well, Zach, Zach doesn't actually say who it is. He's like, there's no way I know. Well, maybe he says, I bet that I'm supposed to come down that hall, that, those stairs. It's Kelly Kapowski. There's no way. I know, I know Kelly, I've studied Kelly's schedule in and out. Stalker. And I know that she is now in gymnastics class. That we never really see her do any way that she cheerleader eventually, but. And here comes Kelly because she can't find her tennis shoes, which Slater so I was the half. And Slater, here's the thing that confuses me: Slater is already holding the shoes before Zach makes the bet. So he was ready for Zach to make. He knew Zach was going to try to make another bet to get the ham radio. This the ham radio for the the bomber jacket. Yeah, so now he has to give up the ham radio. And what does he use his ham radio for? To pretend to be Elvis. Elvis is still alive, he's hidden and stuff, and he's reached to Germany, I guess. Supposedly. Uh and that's this is when uh Screech gets struck by lightning and comes down and his head's all and he touches the TV and the TV shows 
an outside external shot of a school. That is the school from Good Morning Miss Bliss. They used stock footage, I guess. They had, I guess that footage wasn't uh, copyrighted by Disney, I guess. He also turns on a lamp. And he can see the future by uh, telling Zach to uh, answer the phone. The phone's not ringing. The phone goes off. He's like, yeah. And so the next day, he's like, screw you. Okay, I'm fine. Uh, Zach, let's move out. Let's move this way. And so the guy fixing the light, uh, it the light is one of those long lights, drops. But it lands. Where it landed, still would have missed them if they were standing. Because Zach was right like in his locker. And that landed. Okay, so let's say this is Zach's locker and he's standing here. The light falls here. There would have been enough room where they wouldn't have gotten hit. I can see maybe an elbow getting clipped or something, but if he was standing where he was by the locker, it would have just fallen right down. It would have fallen right there. It wouldn't have hit him. I can't even make that realistic. So Zach realized that he's got the geek, the gold, the geek that laid the golden egg, which Screech knows is he's going to say that. So. He decides to use Screech to his advantage, and he makes a bet with Slater again for the ham radio, which he hands to Screech. Of course, does it thus? Was it that Avis? It goes off. By the way, there is a, a scene in the classroom. I think before this, in in, in the Mr. Belding's office, where Mr. Belding asks, uh, "Your mom said you were struck by lightning." I guess she told her. And which later is played by Ruth Buzzy, by the way. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm missing a part, but don't worry, we'll get. I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll get to the testimony part. And so he starts predicting. So he's predicting the future, and he has, he has any side effects. Like one, you can predict the future. Uh, no, there's two side effects. And it makes you think, okay, so that means that they're turning on things were up. But then they do the gag again where Ze Zeke, I'm glad to get Zach hands him the ham radio and it goes, it starts working. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and he goes, well, my mother in law, it's shown that Screech can't predict things. Well, my mother in law's thing was indefinitely. Is there any way? Should be gone by next Tuesday. Yes! So what's your mother-in-law staying with you? But let's get the terrible test of Verdi first. We're introduced to him, and it's the micro-machine guy, you know. I do Yeah, and the gag is that he's speaks too fast, and no one can understand. At one point, everybody just gives up. Zach puts on his music. They give up because they can't understand. The problem is, realistically... There would be no teacher like this. If you're a teacher that speaks that fast, like, everyone is freaking out because they never passed his tests. But that's not their fault, though. Because he speaks too goddamn fast for them to understand what he's saying. Yet, they're all going to fail, mostly. And it's like, oh, it's because you didn't study. How do they know what to study when you're talking a million miles an hour, man? We never see him after this episode again, so, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's here now at the max, I believe, that we see that Zach doesn't know how to use a cellular telephone. <laughs> uh, no, not here, it's, it's later. So, Zach decides to make a bet, uh, to you, do the, the, so, uh, no, Zach is talking to someone on the phone, I think. And he goes to shut it, and he just takes the antenna and pushes it down. And he thinks that's going to turn off this off button on those things. Older cellular telephones. Like, if I was on my phone and I just put it down. I mean, the company is over. They'd have to hang up. They hang up on the other end, and that's one thing. But he just goes like this, and he does it multiple times during this. <clears throat> but, uh... So he knocks over this, 
He hands the phone to Screech and knocks over this water that doesn't touch Screech at all. But we're supposed to believe that when the water fell over and Screech was holding the phone, which, by the way, would start ringing again because he's holding it. Nitpick. You show it every time something electronic touches his hands, it goes off. That somehow caused him to lose his, start losing his powers. So he writes down, he has, by the way, I want to talk about this, this quiz that's coming up, right? This, this midterm. All essay questions. I hated essay questions. Because, you know, I'm autistic. So, I hate essay questions because I'm, I'm, I'm better with multiple choice, you know? Or even if they don't have multiple choice and it's a simple answer the question type thing. But an essay question, you have to write at least a paragraph of stuff, of an answer. And I hated that. It's like long division, right? Do the long division. Oh, and you can't use a calculator. You got to work it out yourself. And I understand that's because then you won't know how to do it. But I couldn't do it. And no one really understood that. I, I got in trouble once because I used a calculator. And it said I had to show my work. So I just did nonsense in between. It's like, no, that's, that's, not, that's not right. I couldn't do long division. I can't. Still can't do long division. It's too much for me. It's too much. I have my son with his homework. And something was long division. And I'm like, uh, I can't help you with this. Sorry. Me stupid. I can't do that. My stepdad had to help him. My stepdad is an electrician. So he knows shit like that. I don't. I'm a janitor. I clean toilets. I don't know shit. Well, I do know shit. But not that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, back to this. So they write out. So he writes down what Screech tells him are the three questions. And then he makes a bet with Slater that... The loser has to be the winner's slave for a week. I have experience with this too. I made a bet with my sister. And I won. But then my mom wouldn't allow her to be my slave for a week. So, no, no, I'm not doing that. But I won. No, you're not doing that. I wasn't going to make her do anything bad. She's... Uh, will you make my bed for me? Will you clean my room for me? Uh, It's not like I was going to say... Massage my feet. No. I'm a kid. I'm going to put my toys away for me. You know, stuff like that. Then again, it's also tricky. Because you can say, put your toys away. My mom had a certain way. You had to put them in a certain place. I had toys thrown away because I threw them in with the stuffed animals. Yes. Yes, I lost the... I lost Power Rangers Mega Zords that way. Mm-hmm. So I'm forever trying to find the freaking Wolf Zord... I couldn't even find it when I moved out. I think my mom threw it away. But there's still stuff that I've had here that have disappeared. And I know there was a time where I was hanging out with someone who stole my shit. But this was before I even hung out with them that it disappeared. I have a I have a Power Rangers Ninja Steel sword. I got after. Like after I was done hanging out with this guy. And I still can't find the goddamn thing. I can't. Anywhere. I, it's got to be somewhere in here. It's got. It's buried somewhere. Or something. It's got to be somewhere in here. If I ever eventually move out of here, I'll find it. Son of a bitch. You know? But anyway. Uh, so the bet. The bet. So whoever. Loser is the winner's slave for a week. So Slater says, I got to go home and make a slave list. You're not going to, I don't know, study. Then he tells Kelly, hey, come to my place and study and I'll help you win. I or help you win. Help you pass. So I should mention that there are a few scenes that I haven't talked about yet in the girls' locker room. So Lisa is stress eating. I can relate. Mm-hmm. I can relate. When my great-grandma passed away, I've had two, two giant-ass Hershey's chocolate bars. My girlfriend at the time took them away from me. She goes, no, no, you don't need this. You don't need this. I was eating my feelings, woman. I lost a lot of weight, though, dating her. Because she ate all the food. Yeah, here's a story. We're talking about high school, right? So I was a senior dating this chick. Ah, she doesn't know to be called a woman. This chick. And so in my school, I got free lunch 
as long as it was what as long as it was the regular lunch. Otherwise, it's not the a la carte on the other side. You have to pay for it. So I went down the a la carte, bought the chicken strips, and I put it on the table. And I went to get the regular meal. When I come back, all of my goddamn chicken strips were gone. It turns out my girlfriend ate some and handed out the others to the rest of the people at the line. I paid for that shit with the money I was earning at work. And I was doing piecework at the time, not the stuff I do now. Piecework. I was, it's not per hour stuff, it's per piece. So I was, I was pissed. And she would constantly do shit like that. Like, I would, I lost weight. And you know how I know it was her that was the cause of me losing weight? Because after we broke up, I gained all the weight back. Yeah. So she was the cause of me losing weight. I don't know. I'm I'm pissed because she took my food away. But I'm also, I don't know. She helped me lose weight. I don't know. <laughs> but still, she was, she ain't want to talk. But anyway. Where we're in this episode, this is going way out of proportion. You know, talking about some of the high schools reminded me of my high school days. So, you know, there'll be more stories like that. But, um, a world of our own. What am I doing? I don't know anymore. Where were we? Right, the study session. So, Zach's study session is in his room with the lights down low and mood music playing. He's like, oh, Kelly, you need to relax. And so she lays back. And he decides to go for a kiss. You know, there are very famous people who have gone to jail for shit like this. But Lisa and Jesse show up and crash the thing. And is like, hey, uh, we need to know what to study. So he's like, okay, it's like this, this, and this, whatever speech is said. And she's like, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Good, because, you know, if you just did this to get Kelly alone, she'd be very mad. And she would kill you, wouldn't she? Yes, she would. So, yeah. But then Screech shows up. I think it's within the same night. And tells him that he he can't remember what the question is on anymore. He's getting a bunch of other questions. Battle the Network stars. Abraham Lincoln freed the Japanese. It's all messed up in his head now. It's going away. All because of he's holding a phone in it. I don't know. So they come up with a plan to make sure that the questions he told the girls are the questions that are written down. So he uses his cellular telephone again and he calls Mr. Testaverde as Mr. Belding and says that the school. Uh, there's been a, a leaky pipe and the classes are canceled and the, the, the school is flooding, so not to come into work. You get screech, ding, ding, ding on the pipes and going, blah, 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 like people are drowning or something. And he calls him, you got it, he calls him Mr. Testaverde. So then he calls Mr. Belding, as Mr. Testaverde, and calls him Mr. Belding and says, uh, that he's got laryngitis and sore throat and cough and all that stuff. And he gives him the three questions for the midterm. So we get to the midterm. By the way, both times, Zach turns off the phone by going like this to the antenna. That's not how you. Do. He's a teenager on a show. Nobody showed him how to do it right. It's a button. It is a prop phone. So maybe the but you know I just thought about that. It's a prop phone. So maybe the button didn't actually work. So he had to do it like that. But it wouldn't have looked any faker if you just pressed the button. You know, you're just like. Set it down. Would it? Have, I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, Mr. Belding shows up to deliver the midterm questions, and they're the same three questions. And when they're announced, Screech goes, I knew I was right. And I went, This line has always confused me. Screech is a nerd. He's supposed to be smart, right? They gave him the questions. Of course they'd be the ones that you saw. Because you gave those questions to him. I had him a glass off for this one. Oh, I... 
I don't know if it's the writer's fault who wrote that line for him and didn't realize it or what. I don't know. It just that line never made sense to me at all. But here comes Mr. Testaverde in a plumber's uniform. Apparently, plumbing is a hobby of his. Because plumbing can be a hobby, I guess. And they're going back and forth calling each other by their first names. George, Richard, George, Richard. Wait, you call me George. You always call me George. Like, Those aren't my questions. You call me George. You always call me George. The guy who called me called me Mr. Testaverde. And Mr. Belding goes, and the guy who called me called me Mr. Belding. But who would... This one may roll my eyes a little bit. You know, you go back and you watch stuff. But who would be crazy enough to make two fake phone calls? Just as he says that, Zach's phone goes off. Okay. I understand what they were trying to do, but that's a little too coincidental for me. Zach puts his head down. I like how Mr. Buddy uses the plunger to pop his head back up, although... Zach has hair, so it wouldn't work like that, but I... It's like a suction cup, right? You can't put suction cup on stuff that's hairy. It won't stick. So that wouldn't really work. I'm not going to try it with mine. It's been in caca. So I'm assuming that was supposed to be clean. It was a prop. So, yeah. So he's got detention. But Brody picks up and goes, Mr. Morris can't come to the phone right now. He's busy picking up his season tickets to detention. Leave a message at the beep. And hands the phone back to Zach, where Zach says beep. And then proceeds to talk on it. And then you can see just off screen, he hangs it up like that again. I don't know why it's bugging me so much, but it is. So then Mr. Belding leaves, and Mr. Testaverde really delivers the same fast talking. It's like <clears throat> Mr. Belding had to leave because if he stayed there while he delivered. That the test questions, he would, he would break the common sense of this and be like, if he heard how fast the guy's talking, he wouldn't allow him to keep doing it. Like, you know. Although Zach does talk fast to Mr. Belding on the phone, so if he does know, I don't know. And the results in, Lisa got a C minus, which is passing. Jesse got a B, which is passing. Kelly got a D plus, which is passing. And Slater doesn't say his, but he says Zach's, which is an F minus. Apparently the minus is because he was meddling. But there's no such grade as an F minus. F is the lowest you can get. Although Jesse does make a reference to a teacher losing it and getting everyone uh, eight, H's and Q's or something. G's and Q's or something in Q's. I don't say P's and Q's, but that's not. That's minor P's and Q's. But yeah. R's and Q's? I, I, something in Q's. Which is referenced here where it's like, what's the letter of my name? It's a Q, Jesse. It's a B. What she had that like she got the highest grade of all of them, but she still faints because she has to have all A's. Zach got an F minus, and so he so he's like, okay, slave. First, I'll take the bomber jacket back. No, <laughs> that wasn't a part of the bet. He's your slave, but that does not mean you can make him give back the stuff because that stuff was not a part of the bet. Bomber jacket, the ham radio. He doesn't ask for the ham radio back, but he asked for the bomber jacket back that's not a part of the bet those were not part of the bet and if he if he wasn't wearing it he wouldn't have asked for it back Zach wins that jacket and this is the first time that he wins it and he and then Sarah asked for it back so it's it's a it's a plot point here and then the first thing he does was he ordered me a pizza and then get the start on my list and that whole thing he's got is a whole list of stuff It's just for the first day. Like, did he study? We don't get to hear what his uh, grade is, but, you know. And then Zach hangs up again. But no, he, he gets a pizza with extra anchovies for him. 
And that's how the episode ends. So, I wanted to mention one more thing. I forgot to mention from the end of the last episode. I forgot to mention it. The Lisa card. I referenced the joke and then I forgot to say it. At the end of the last episode, Lisa card, he goes, Lisa card, don't leave home with it. Okay, Lisa card is a reference to Visa. But it says don't go home with it, which is a reference to don't leave home. Don't leave home with it, which is a reference to don't leave home without it. Which is the American Express card. So, pick one. I just had to mention that. But this episode, I, I like it. I like the whole, I wish there was more of the future shenanigans. I think that's why they added the scene with Mr. Bell. Why the scene with Mr. Bell. He was in there, otherwise we probably wouldn't get much of it. Because it pretty much after that is when it goes away. So, yeah. So what are your thoughts on this episode? <clears throat> no comments, no make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Sky, and I'll see you in the next one.